The knowledge of God in the land is essential to the well-being of a nation where God is unknown, where men live without God in the world, where his knowledge is suffered to lapse, and the rising generation are trained with no fear of God before their eyes. Their vice and crime will be rampant and unchecked, and there will be no guarantee for social order and peace. This is a quote coming to you from the pulpit commentary. Now, before getting into this broadcast, I want us to go back to this opening quote and look at some of the things that were read. First of all, the knowledge of God in the land is essential to the well-being of a nation. I want that to sink deep into your mind and your heart today. The knowledge of God in the land is essential to the well-being of a nation. Where God is unknown, where men live without God in the world, where his knowledge is allowed to lapse, where the rising generation are trained with no fear of God before their eyes, vice and crime will be rampant and unchecked, and there will be no guarantee for social order and peace. So all is dependent on the measure of the knowledge of God in the land. How important it is that we have the knowledge of God in the land. Now, there's a famous saying that says, no God equals no peace. But you can write it as no God, N-O. N-O, God, equals N-O, peace. But you can also write it as K-N-O-W, God. No God, no S in knowledge. K-N-O-W, God, equals no peace. K-N-O-W, peace. So if you know God, you will know peace. In this broadcast, we are continuing our new series based on the theme, Increasing in the Knowledge of God. In this particular broadcast, we will examine Hosea 4.1, which says, Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel, for the Lord has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. Now, we want to look at what happens when the knowledge of God is dismissed, cast aside, or lost. How does it affect an individual, a people, a society, or a nation? Then we want to come to a judgment or a personal conviction on the dire need or grave importance of the knowledge of God, and all of this will be based on the Holy Scriptures. Okay, going to our opening text in Hosea 4.1, which says, Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel, for the Lord has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. The prophet Hosea says, hear the word of the Lord. In other words, attend, consider, duly weigh the word of the Lord. Hearing of the mind as well as of the ear is here required. Silence is ordered and attention required. Hosea is summoning all the people, that includes the prophets and the priests, He's summoning them to come before the judgment seat of God. He's calling uh, upon them to hear what the Lord would say to them. To make their defense or to hear their indictment. Hear the word of the Lord. Now this is the message of the sovereign, holy, just, 
and mighty Jehovah. He that speaks is the great God. Though the messenger is a man, the message is not man's, it is God's. Hear the word of the Lord, you children of Israel, for the Lord has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. Jehovah here is presented as the plaintiff as well as the judge. He's the person bringing forth the lawsuit, but he's also the judge, and the Israelites are the defendants. Jehovah here is representing himself as prosecuting Israel for breaking their covenant. God is bringing forth a charge, and he's bringing it into the open court. An indictment is read, this charge, this accusation, that's the controversy. God is bringing forth a lawsuit, a legal action, a judicial ground of complaint against his people for breaking their covenant with him. He's suffering injuries and damages, and so he's bringing a lawsuit against them. The Lord has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. Now, we want to look at the last one first nor knowledge of God in the land. The Lord has a controversy with his people because there's no knowledge of God in the land. We're talking about God here. The greatest, holiest, most beneficent being is uh, being utterly ignored by his people. And this word knowledge is not merely referring to the knowledge of God uh, like, for instance, that he's the creator and the preserver of the world and his people. It's going far beyond that. The knowledge of God here is referring to that which is exhibited in practice, that which produces fear of God and that which produces love and truthfulness toward the brethren. And this knowledge of God the people of God erased that out of their minds. Israel lost the knowledge of Jehovah, and that's their sin. The root of it is the lack of the knowledge of God and the scriptures. And we look at Romans one twenty eight just to get a kind of get a picture of what this knowledge of God is that Hosea is talking about here. In Romans one twenty eight. Paul said they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. This was their first step in their sin. They forsook him. They took every method to erase this knowledge out of their minds and keep it from others. They cast it out. They didn't approve of it. And this was the true source of their crimes. They didn't choose to acknowledge him. So this is what Hosea is talking about. No knowledge of God in the land. No acknowledging God. What that means is no recognizing his authority or his claims over his people. The people of God chose to forsake him and to follow their own passions and lusts. For the Lord has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land because there is no knowledge of God in the land. There's no acknowledging of him, his authority and his claims over the people of God. And then out of that came this result because there is no truth nor mercy. First of all, there was no knowledge of God in the land and it resulted in because there is no truth. What is the prophet is talking about here? He, when he says the word truth, he's talking about justice. That truth there includes works as well as words. When we think of truth, we think of speaking the truth. But this is talking about doing as well as saying. It implies uprightness in speech 
and behavior. This word truth here, when it says, because there is no truth, it includes veracity, faithfulness, integrity, righteousness. And notice, first of all, the knowledge of God, acknowledging God, first went, and now also what results is there's no truth. And what this imports is that no one's speaking the truth and no one is doing the truth. No one is trusting another anymore. You can't trust people anymore. There's no truth. No truth of words. No truth of promises. No truth in witnessing. No truth in utterances, engagements, or dealings. There's no making good in deeds what they said in words. Man is not keeping his word. There's no regard here for the truth. No conscience, no sincerity, no uprightness, no faithfulness in minds, words, or works. And generally speaking, what this is saying is they have, the people have no sense at all of the thing called honesty. It's totally lacking honesty. They have made no conscience of what they said and did, though it's contrary to the truth. This is what happens when the knowledge of God is taken away, is erased from the people of God. What results is there's no truth, no honesty, no integrity, no uprightness, no faithfulness. For the Lord has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land because there's no knowledge of God in the land because there is no truth, but that's not all. Then he goes on to say, nor mercy. And mercy, we think of mercy, it's what God does out of his boundless love. It's that super abundance of goodness over and above what is meat. That's coming from God. He's a merciful God. But this is talking about mercy coming from the people of God. And it it includes loving kindness, piety to parents, or respect or regard to parents, natural affection, mothers having a natural affection for their babies. It includes forgiveness, tenderness, beneficence, Goodness, it includes all love to one another, love issuing in acts. But when you have no knowledge of God in the land, you're not going to have mercy. You're not going to have truth, and you will not have mercy. You will not have this respect for parents, for authority. There will be no uh, uh, respect for authority. There will not be this natural affection Uh, There will not be forgiveness. There will be hatred. What do we see now in our nation? Hatred. There will be bitterness, unforgiveness. There will be selfishness, greed, covetousness, instead of goodness and mercy. The Lord has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land because there is no truth nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. The fatal defects here are that there is that there is no truth, nor mercy. And truth and mercy, these are the perfections of the divine nature. Throughout the scripture, you will find that they are always representing God. Truth and mercy, truth and mercy, hand in hand, representing God. And they will be lacking due to a lack of the knowledge of God in the land. We can say it this way, that truth and mercy have their roots in the knowledge of God. Or we can say it this way, the knowledge of God, the the fruit of it, it produces truth and mercy. Now, what happens when you have the absence of truth and mercy due to the lack of the knowledge of God? When you have the absence of truth and mercy, it gives rise to tremendous crimes. Crime and violence, 
reaches a critical point. Injustice gains the upper hand. What follows is a national commission of the most enormous sins. This is the result of no knowledge of God in the land. You have no truth, and then you have no mercy. And the Lord has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. Listen to what Matthew Henry said. And it is not strange that there is no truth and mercy when there is no knowledge of God in the land. What good can be expected where there is no knowledge of God? The pulpit commentary said, True religion begins with a saving knowledge of God. Where the right knowledge of God is absent, we need not expect truth or mercy among men. The pulpit commentary also said, wherever the right knowledge of God is wanting, there sin and Satan are sure to triumph. When the duties of truth, mercy, and the knowledge of God were omitted, the grossest sin succeeded and took place. Barnes notes said this, Ignorance of God, then, is a great evil, a source of all other evils. And Life in the Spirit Study Bible said, An increase in crimes of violence always follows when a nation does not acknowledge God and his word as the ultimate authority. Going back to the opening line of the pulpit commentary that we read in the beginning, the knowledge of God in the land is essential to the well-being of a nation. Let me ask you today, are you seeing the importance of the knowledge of God in your nation? Does God have a controversy with your nation today? Because the knowledge of God is lapsing and truth and mercy is being replaced with an increase in crimes of violence. Well, then I ask you, what are you going to do about it? Our time is up for today's broadcast, but I encourage you, stay tuned for our next teaching as we continue our study of the theme, Increasing in the Knowledge of God. This is Connie Giordano with Walking in Truth Ministry, praying that you will desire to grow in the knowledge of God and be all that Jesus wants you to be. In his name I pray, amen.